Hello and welcome to the Plaid Sheep Oracle. This is kind of a little impromptu collective reading that is definitely for me, but seems to want to be shared as well. So what started it was this card from my Wordless Oracle that came out in my own personal reading this morning. And after I was done and I'd, you know, kind of put the cards back, it continued to sort of stare at me and, and call to me. And I did a, a reading just, you know, on the image of this, this image that You know, in my reading, it was it was about a kind of unification um, of all the parts, like that that something has been rising and reaches here at the top. People talk about you know, the, a kundalini experience, a kundalini rising, right? This energy coming up the spine. And the way that it has come through for me personally is as a unification, as a reconnection of all those energy centers. We often talk about them, uh, you know, just sort of individually, oh, this is about your heart chakra, or it's about, but to me that, um, that's too, right, it's, it's making too many clear divisions. I don't think that it's like that. I actually don't see them as kind of individual centers. I see it as a kind of spiral rising up through the body and that they, you know, they're not separate from each other. They bleed into each other. Um, Donna Eden, if you know who she is, she teaches about energy medicine. She sees uh, energy and she describes some of the things that she sees in people. And she does talk about the chakras, but she has this program where there's a deliberate interconnection between the chakras, connecting them to each other so that they're, they're conversing with each other. And I think that we've, I mean, in so many ways that we've, right, that we've divided things up. <laughs> you know, we got really excited about science and uh, figuring things out, and we started dividing things into smaller and smaller parts. And I think that, right, that way of thinking has ended up in other places than science. And that now maybe we are coming into a space of reconnection of things, of seeing things holistically, uh, you know, the whole context of things. And so that's what the, this sort of Kundalini rising feels like to me, that there is, that it's actually, rather than some sort of energy shooting up through the, the chakras to your head, that it's, that the feeling you get is actually because all of these spots have reconnected with one another. Um, so when I, when I laid it out, one of the things that came out was this, this was the first underlying, the two of inspiration. And this, you know, seems, right, it's a searching, searching, searching energy. And then right below that is this four of emotions and she's, you know, all up in her head, perhaps she is, she isn't seeing that she's sitting right within this cosmic kiss. 
And then below that is this five of inspiration, five of wands, this kind of, um, you know, wandering energy, trying different things, not knowing, you know, um, things not feeling right. And there's also an interesting thing, right? She's got this um, sort of opening, this portal, this mirror space right there. Um, we could say at the root chakra, at the base, um, also in a sense part of the, the, perhaps the sacral chakra because right, the sexual organs are there. And then actually below that is the Knight of Cups. And today he's seeming, um, right, sort of restless. Like he's, um, I almost sort of feel like he's trying to get some sort of message across, um, you know, by, by stomping his hooves because you're not, right, there's a, there's a miscommunication. You know, it's like Lassie showing up. There's been a, you know, cave in at the mine, we need help. Right, so this this animal energy is wanting to get a message across, but th there's sort of a disconnect happening because we're not, as a society, all that in tune with the animal body. And then the bottom of the deck is this awakening. Then we have this fabulous card. She's my favorite queen of cups, the, this queen of emotions. And <laughs> I mean, really? Two completely different decks. And yet this, this synchrony. And again, this sense of rising energy. And rising, um, you know, unexpectedly, you know, here we are, we're all walking around here in the surf, maybe again, searching. And then this energy just rises up to meet us. And to be able to see that we have this seven of materials. And this is my follow the rose road, like the, the yellow brick road, but made of roses. To follow that sensual Venusian, also Mars, I think, right? Venus and Mars uh, energies within us. to follow that prompting, that directing. And then the muse of voices. Uh, this feels a bit like, um, you know, listening to all the voices. I was prompted when this card came out, before I did the reading, I actually went online and I, all of the muses, there are nine muses of different things, of, of um, epic poetry and tragedy and dance and all of these things. Um, at, uh, astronomy and astrology, those two things used to be the same thing, Urania. And I was prompted to look them all up and see, you know, where they all are in the heavens now. And there wasn't anything sort of, there was one compelling thing for me personally, but I didn't, it didn't feel like, you know, it felt like more that I was, right? I was engaging with all these different voices within, within the self, that there may be voices and they're all part of us. We all, right, is all part of the I, 
right? The different voices is different motivations, different needs that we have. And that we want to listen to all of them. And then the hanged muse. Right? Seeing seeing it differently. Um, and she seems, you know, she's she's done this flip and she's ended up there. And there's a kind of ah. Oh, right? Like a, a a realization energy. Like she's suddenly seen something that she wasn't able to see before. And it may be that you need to do this, um, this perhaps a, a direct exploration of the motivations, needs, desires, these voices. It may be that you need to do that in order to be able to see this rising energy to, right, to connect everything up from the root through the crown within yourself, that these different voices, right, the root chakra versus the crown chakra, that they may have different needs and desires or that they, um, that they express, I should say, different needs and desires that are all yours. And that by reconnecting them to each other, you right, you create a clarity and awakening. And so then we have this oop, oh, chaos. Although interestingly, right, what that just revealed was this nine of materials, right? This, the, you know, this seems like maybe reaching the the peak of the rose road, or or um, being able to rush with joy along this rose road, the road of roses, the path of roses. And then we have this ace of materials, this ace of pentacles that keeps showing up. So there's this, right, this seven of, of cups, again, this all of these different needs. And the bottom of the deck, interestingly, is this other Knight of Cups. And sometimes he appears as he does now as a little bit drunk, <laughs> um, intoxicated, and not in a good way. So that there's, you know, drunk on something that is preventing clarity. Drunk on um, some goal that you have that isn't really yours or that you don't actually really want. Um, drunk on, you know, all the news and information and stuff. There's some, some sort of intoxication that is preventing clarity. And below this seven, we have a different seven, seven of wands, defensiveness, uh, resistance. But below that is the eight of wands, this inrushing energy. Uh, this could all be, depending on when you're watching it, it could all be the current astrology, which is uh, the eclipse space between the lunar eclipse in Pisces and the solar eclipse in Libra on October 2nd. There's other stuff happening too that, that may be this inrushing Eight of Wands energy that may make all of that may make doing this process really important or really you want to write it like takes a priority in some way that, that, that the energy compels this almost inspires it. So then we have the moon 
coming out. Um, emotions and also desires. Uh, Diana is the goddess of the hunt. And she goes seeking. Hunting for what she wants. And next to her is this Justice Athena. Um, so there's a meeting here too of heart and mind, of emotions and thinking. And interestingly, this Athena is not, she doesn't show up as usual. Usually she shows up sort of armored up and, and kind of a warrior looking person. But here, you know, it's more about, um, about wisdom. There's a softness here. There's this craft happening of weaving or rather of spinning. Um, There's skill and craft rather than pure intellect here. And then we have this, right, this unifying of the different motivations. The unified will is how the alchemists referred to it. To have a unified will about something helped you to achieve the thing because then all of your needs, all of your motivations, every, all of this was behind the same goal. Now, I don't think that this needs to be a static thing that you get a unified will and then it just stays that way forever. I think it's all in flux that you reach this space on individual subjects. Because life changes, new things come up, you get new desires, desires change. There may be something that you desire now that goes away. And then there's the Seven of Swords, who's kind of over here looking at this party. So this is, right, these all these sevens, the Seven of Cups, the Seven of Wands, the Seven of Swords. These are all kind of the confusing sevens. There is a Seven of Pentacles, which didn't come out, but that's more of a persistence energy. Whereas these guys, right, are too many cups, right? The people attacking, feeling defensive, too many thoughts. Right, I can only carry five of these thoughts. There's two over here. I don't know what I'm doing with. So this confusion. So the kind of, um, I mean, this is sort of an advice row. Um, we do have this queen of swords. So getting the clarity, getting the, um, making the choice. This justice card is associated with Libra and we're about to enter Libra season. And actually we'll be entering Libra season the day I post this reading tomorrow, September 22nd. And the Queen of Swords is also Libra. So there, this may indeed be this space now. If you're watching it later, you might be entering Libra season then or there's some, you're getting some transit to your Libra placement. But there's a clarity here, a, um, a decisiveness. Below that is the star, uh, the wish, the hope, the guiding light, and below that, peace. A peace, right? Making a decision peacefully, choosing, not by perseverating or making lists of pros and cons or agitating about it, but 
the decision is natural when everything lines up. When you have this unified self. And then below that, at the bottom of the deck, is the wheel. So this moment, whenever you're watching it in time, is opening, right? There's an energetic opening. Ace of Cups. Here, the root of the power of water. That grail that guides you. That isn't just heart, it's also, um, you know, mind and body, the desires of the body, the desires of the mind, of the intellect, and of the heart, and of the soul, right? It's all these things combining. Then this king of discs, who uh, has been coming out repeatedly for me and in other places, and he feels very much like this, right? That he's less about, you know, money or, or any of these things and more about this unified body that he's, right? Because he's got this really strong third eye happening here that is rooted in his, in his body, in his physical self, in his wholeness. And then we have pleasure. So, you know, what is pleasurable and really pleasurable? Like genuinely pleasurable. Um, people sometimes think that pleasure will lead them down the wrong way. That, you know, that, that if they navigate by their pleasure, you know, that they'll end up drinking too much or eating too much or, but, I say that these things are not actually pleasurable. Um, they fill some sort of need, but they aren't genuinely pleasurable. You don't really feel good, you know, if you eat an entire bag of cookies. That doesn't really feel good. You know, it may satisfy some sort of craving for something, but it doesn't really feel good. And pleasure is to like what really feels good all around to all aspects of yourself. And then there's this apathy card at the end um, that is the thing that we're avoiding. And so I asked for a couple of clarifying cards and what I got was this two of wands and the fool. So this two of wands is, right, is the recall of this. So it's the seeking, it's the looking for something from outside, it's waiting, it's um, hoping. Uh, as Jim Carrey says, hope is a beggar. Right, it's faith that's the, the more powerful word. And that comes through in the fool. The fool has faith, the fool doesn't hope. The fool has faith and openness. Um, trust, uh, positive, optimistic expectation. Um, and openness to experience. There's no single answer for the fool. There isn't, you know, something highly specific for the fool. The fool is willing to embrace lots of different things, to try lots of different things, and also to write to live now um, rather than to sit in this sense of waiting. I was thinking, you know, the, the phrase wu wei is 
doing without effort. Right, kind of doing without doing, the wu-wei. Uh, and I was thinking that there is, right, that there should be something like that for waiting. That there is, right, there's a positive expectation, but you're not waiting. There isn't this sense of foot tapping or, um, you know, the clock ticking away or, right, this sense of waiting. So we want to know that this, right, that this is possible. That we're not waiting for it. We, we, um, we reach for it. We embrace it. Uh, we open to it and we believe that it is possible and that actually that it is here now, right? Because it is, it's right here below our feet, just right here. It may only take acknowledgement, recognition, seeing it for it to come to be. So I hope this is useful. Um, and that you are doing very well today, that you feel good, that you embrace pleasure. And I will see you next time. So long.